Hey folks, just a reminder to check out my other channel, How to Rock Spirit, where I talk about everything under the sun, from astrology to mysticism to psychedelic yoga to practical materialism and philosophy too. Hope to see you there. Namaste. Good evening folks, my name is Dustin Cormier and you're watching How to Rock a Campfire. Uh, today's episode is going to be on a song called The Cover of the Rolling Stone uh, by Dr. Hook. Uh, I love this tune, classic tune. Um, and I guess I should say, oh well, uh, I'm going to play this song with my Uncle Tom and a bunch of my dad's buddies uh, who are guys I've always jammed with for a long time. And I always like to say to people, if you know any people who you can jam with, who are pretty good, you know, uh, who could be like a mentor to you. Uh, this is what these guys did for me, is that I joined their circle and they would jam every other weekend because I was my dad's son, you know, they kind of would put up with me sucking for a little while and I would come to the jams and they'd be like, okay, right on, this is part of the process. And then eventually I blossomed into a musician because I'm constantly watching them trying to get their rhythm, you know what I mean? So you should try to do that if you can get it going. Anyway. Um, so this is a song that I've always played with them, and I'm going to show a video of me, my brother, and my dad, and all these guys jamming this song after. First I'm going to show it to you, or explain it to you. <clears throat> um, so, and it's a hilarious tune, and I love doing all the vocal parts and stuff. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe it. Ah, uh, no, uh, don't touch it. <laughs> hey Ray, hey Sugar, tell them who we are. Up that, but that's what I've got kind of going for that intro. Uh, I think it's, it, I don't think it's the seventh, I think it's he actually goes to the sixth. And so that's that, uh, the main riff when it, or the first riff when it comes in like that. Um, hey Ray, hey Sugar. So what I'm doing is I'm basically hitting the E string on the second fret and hammering it off. Then using my third finger to hit the fourth fret of the G strings, the B note, bending it up to the bending it up to the the, the C, like the minor third of the A uh, scale, right? And what I try to do is on that second bend, I try to bend up like more to the C sharp, but it's a hard hard bend. Fuck. Even just to go up higher than the C, whatever, it's what I'm trying to go for. Um, right? Uh, C, C, B, A, and then fourth fret of the D, and then second fret of the A, or of the G, F sharp, and then A. Anyway, it's those little starting things. And then, um, for most folks, this is all you need is the chords anyway, so I just want to get that out of the way. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so, you know. Well, we're big rock singers, we got golden fingers. Uh, what, I like, what I like to do for songs like this is a 1-5 country type of tune, you know? Uh, when I say 1-5, I mean that I'm hitting the root note of the, the chord, and then doing a chuck up, and then hitting the fifth of the chord, and then doing a chuck up. Almost like a bass player would be exactly the same thing as a bass player would be doing for a lot of these country songs. They just go boom. And then you'll usually do a run, bum, 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 to the, like whatever chord, right? Um, so you're trying to do that and accent those bass notes as, as well as playing the song at the same time. What I like to do is I'll put my thumb on the E string when I hit the A note so that the E string doesn't resonate with the A at the same time because they don't sound as good together you know, like loudly like that. Well, we're big rock singers, we got golden fingers, and we're loved everywhere we go. Yeah, it sounds like us. We sing about beauty and we sing about truth. Uh, I guess I would do an E seventh right there. And we're loved everywhere we go. That sounds like us. We sing about beauty and we sing about truth. Thousand dollars a show, right? Now what I'm just doing there 
bass going from that E at ten thousand dollars a show. I'm just kind of running up to the A. I'm a bass player, so I always add these little runs on the E. Second finger on the F sharp, and then after that's the pink. You do like an E seven by taking your third finger off your E chord, right? And then you put your pinky on the fourth fret of the E, and that makes like an E seventh with a G slash G sharp, E seventh with a G sharp in the bass. So uh, we sing about me and we sing about you at ten thousand dollars a show. Right, we take all kind of pills to put the salt. There is a little bass thing in here that I like to do too, and I'm just gonna show you just so I said that I I can say that I said it is um. At ten thousand dollars a show. Um, once again, I'm a bass player, so I'm putting this in here. Uh, you're going open, uh, so F sharp. Sorry. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. So E, and then uh, open E, and then second fret of the E is the F sharp, and then A, and then F sharp. A. Bam, 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 right. Uh, at ten thousand dollars a show. All kind of pills to give us all kind of thrills, but the thrill will never know. Uh, this is something that's good. I think even the guitar players do the same kind of thing. You know, this is a very basic country run progression that everybody should kind of know. You know, uh, and uh, how I like to do it. There's, you know, you can do it with your regular e, a, a chord, and then you can when you go to your A seven, uh, A seven chord. Uh, it's kind of tricky to do it because you're, I mean, what you're trying to do is you're trying to accent the bass notes. Uh, right? And so you don't necessarily have to play the chord when you're accenting those bass notes. You take all kinds of things to give us all kinds of things, then switch to that A7, but the thrill will never know. Right? So from that A7, when you hit the, uh, the you go A, A, B, A, B, C sharp, D, right? Um, tough thing to do for a new player. Um, I'm just going to show you guys what I usually do for the song. Uh, and that's basically for that second part of the chord, you put your pinky on the fourth fret of the A string and leave the original A chord tag going to build up to the, the, the D. But the thrill will never know. Right? Take all kind of pills to give us all kind of thrills, but the thrill will never it's the thrill that'll get you when you get your picture. Um, so yeah. Uh, what might be a bit easier for people though, uh, if you can't do the run at all, then just skip it, you know? But the thrill will never know. It's the thrill, right? I just did it without it, right? Maybe if you want, just to have the song to play, do that first and then slowly add these little runs, you know, if you can. But the thrill will never know. That first chorus, you only do it once, right? Uh, same thing with the second chorus, too, but yeah. Um, and I guess I should say, uh, obviously, if you're playing with a bunch of people, the vocals are a part of the music of the whole thing as anything else, and it's hard to blesh different people doing different vocals, so you just kind of got to assign it sometimes, you know? Okay, you do this part, and you do this part, and I'll do this part. Oh, you, you want me to do that part? What the hell, you know? That's part of the flow, you know what I mean? Um, and you got one group of people going, rolling, rolling stone, stone, stone. So yeah, uh, that's one, and then there'll, there's another harmony in there. Rolling stone. See, what I like to do is I like the, every note that you play is always going to be one of the notes in a chord, you know? You'll notice that I'm going, rolling stone, 
Now I just looked for that note. It's somewhere in this E chord, right? So I played my E7 chord. It's none of them, but when I took off my pinky finger, that's the B note. Stone, right? Rolling stone. which is the third of the A chord, right? When you go to that A chord, the harmony note of the singers is probably usually going to be in line with the chord, right? Stone. So that's why I'm thinking, you know, let's figure this out together, folks. I'm looking for the next harmony, if there's any other harmonies in there. Rolling stone. Uh, there's another note, there's a lower harmony here, the, the third. Stone. So like, uh, rolling stone. So there's the G sharp for the E chord, and then the A note. I mean, you know, that's what music's all about, is the dissonance of one note harmonizing into the consonance with the next chord. With just one little movement, that one little note changes, and it's kind of like harmonious, you know? Anyway. Um, yeah. Stone. 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 So that's that harmony. And then there's even more, you know, my point is, is that I want to show you guys that like if you're gonna work on harmonies with people, this is what everyone did. This is what the Beatles did, this is what the Beach Boys did, the Bee Gees, uh, Pink Floyd, you know, all the all the best vocal, the Eagles, is what they would do. Is that they would see the chord, see the notes that are in the chords, and see, it's like, you know, almost like me playing this guitar chord. Might as well be a piano. I could take all the notes that you're hearing on this and hit them on the piano at the same time. And you could do the same thing with vocals. You can take, you can isolate each and every single note. E B G sharp E B B. And you can isolate each of the notes and make them into a vocal chord, almost like a vocal a piano made of people's voices. And that's what you do with songs like this. I want to show you that last harmony before we switch around or whatever, just to see the point I'm getting at. So we got the one harmony. Rolling stone. Stone. Right? We've got the, uh, the fifth harmony, which is the B note. Rolling stone. There's one more harmony. It's probably going to be a mono harmony. Uh, you've got uh, the E note is the the next harmony in the E chord. Stone. actually do that but whatever <laughs> yeah, I still wanted to put it out there you know, uh, I guess that was a little vocal lesson sort of thing for you guys which I think is kind of cool I was trying to expand my horizons people <laughs> anyway <laughs> so after that first chorus we go to this uh, the uh, you know that's a very very good idea we come into the second verse. Second verse is the one where you got the really low voiced guy. I got a freaky old lady, cocaine king, embroiders all my jeans. Oh, it's a tough one. But if you got a bunch of people in the room singing it, you can hear it, it's like, oh wow, they're actually doing it, you know? I got my poor old gray head daddy driving by limousine. Now it's all designed to blow our minds, but our minds won't really be blown. Like the low that'll get you when you get your picture on the cover of the Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone, see my pictures on the cover. I'm gonna buy five copies for my mother. Stone. There's a high harmony there that's really kind of nice too. Is that third line in the chorus, right? I'm gonna buy five copies for my mother. Stone. And then, yeah, so after that second verse, uh, it doesn't go, you're, you know, everyone always waits like, oh, this, we're going to go into it again, but not yet. Uh, it does the chorus once on the second chorus, and then it's like, on the cover of the rolling stone. Hey, I know how what rock and roll. Oh, that's beautiful. 
beautiful. You want to like screw it up on purpose, right? Uh, there's an actual riff that they do. It's like I don't know, something, something. Anyway, um, and then he goes, "Oh, that's beautiful." And then it comes into the third verse. We got a lot of little tidbits. And I guess I should say it, it sucks because this is like one of my favorite verses, you know, we got a genuine Indian guru who's teaching us a better way. Love that one. Um, but I think we duffed it in this video I'm going to show you. We just kind of said the second verse over, which kind of happens sometimes, you know. <laughs> Don't know all the words, just let's just borrow that second verse one more time. <laughs> yeah, anyway, it happens. <laughs> Got a bunch of drunk people trying to play a song. Anybody got the words? No? Well, we're still going. <laughs> That's worth it. And then after that last verse, you know, and we keep getting a picture, but we can't get a picture on the cover of the Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone, see my picture on the cover. And so this is finally the chorus where you would do it twice, right? On the, uh, oh, see my smiling face. subjects. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> I ain't kidding. We make a beautiful cover. <laughs> and I like right at the end, man, it's like it does the whole thing. Uh, Once my smiling face on the cover of the open store. And we be on the front smiling, man. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the cover of the Rolling Stone by Dr. Hook. Um, and now I'm going to show you guys a video of me and my dad and a bunch of my dad's friends playing this song right now. Hope you guys dig. Thanks for watching.